Hi guys, it's Chase here again with Star Tutors here to talk to you a little bit about the ACT math section and what you guys can do in five easy steps to not only improve your score, but eventually hope to get to that perfect score of a 36. Step number one, you have to realize that the ACT math section is in order of difficulty. And what I mean by that is question one is the easiest question and question 60 is theoretically the hardest question. Now, that's a little bit off in the sense that really questions 45 through 60 are all level two, level three questions, meaning that they're very difficult concepts. What most students want to do is they want to focus on the last 15 questions because, hey, those are the hardest questions and I know I need to get those right in order to get to a 36. But what a common misconception is, is if you get the first 45 questions correct and you completely guess on the remaining 15, you'll statistically speaking get somewhere between a 28 and a 29 on the test based on the last two to three years of testing. So again, it's very, very important to focus on getting the first 45 questions correct before even looking at the last 15. Amazingly, if you get to a 28 and you increase your score, every single additional point or every single additional question will be an additional point on the overall test. So again, focus on the first 45 before turning your attention at all to the last 15. If you're already scoring above a 28, if this is consistent, you've gotten 28s or 29s or above, two or three tests in a row, then you don't necessarily need to pay attention to that. Just make sure you're not making any careless errors in the first 45 questions. That actually transitions nicely into step number two. In order to improve your score, once you get to 45, once you've mastered the first 45 questions, we want to turn our attention to the last 15. But rather than just immediately jumping into 46 and focusing 46, 47, 48, 49, and so on and so forth, pick questions in the last 15. And what I mean by that is go through, and it can be very brief, go through the last 15 questions and see which concepts you've seen before. For example, if question 46 is a matrices question, if it's a matrix question, or if it's a vectors question, those are really high level concepts. If, if you haven't seen vectors before, if you haven't taken honors or AP physics before, you're probably not familiar with what a vector is. So don't, don't pay attention to that number 46. Rather, go to a question that has to do with functions or triangles in the last 15, because those are questions really almost everybody throughout the country covers within geometry and algebra two. So it's very, very important to recognize picking questions in the last 15 rather than doing it in order. So 46, 47 is not the way that you want to do it. You want to do 53 and then 47 and then 59 because those are questions you've seen before. So again, pick questions in the last 15. One and two kind of go hand in hand and you should master those two sections before focusing on anything else. Now again, as you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we're looking to get a 36. That's the, that's the final score, that's the best score you can possibly get. And so if you're looking to get a 36, you have to get 58, 59, or 60 questions correct, depending on the test. So we have to start to answer some of the harder questions. And in order to do that, we move on to step number three. Step number three details what we call picking, picking answers, picking numbers, or what we classify them as pick tricks. When we're talking about pick tricks, we're talking about using numbers, or better yet, using answers to plug in for variables within the question. I'm sure most of you guys are sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I've definitely seen questions that, that have one, two, or maybe even three variables. Who's seen like the 5x plus 3y plus z question, right? Potentially you guys have seen those questions, and so what we're doing with the pick tricks is rather than solving them in some traditional way where you have to go step by step, or your teacher doesn't give you full credit, this is a multiple choice test and we want to use the answer choices because one of them has to be correct. We want to use the answer choices to plug back into the question. So plug it back in for variables because again, if you find that one of the answer choices works, then in all likelihood, that's got to be the right answer. So we call it the pick tricks. It's in actually in our ACT tutorial. We spend about an hour on lessons using the pick tricks. But it's very, very important that if you're going to master the ACT math section, and better yet, master both the ACT and SAT math sections, you have to understand the pick tricks and how they apply to, to basic, advanced, basic and advanced algebra as well as functions. So think about the pick tricks. Step four to master the ACT math section is to understand the scoring. Most students walk into the test thinking that it's like a test in school. In order to get a 36, you have to get a perfect score. Well, actually, that's not true. On some tests, you can actually miss up to two questions and still get a perfect 36 on the math section. Other tests, you have to get 59 right, or in even some, you have to get all 60 right, but it varies. 
that is, that's true of every point on the ACT math section. So again, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, you can actually miss up to 12 questions and still get a 28 and sometimes a 29 and sometimes even a 30 on the ACT math section, up to 12. In school, 12, so 48 out of 60, 12 incorrect answers would actually result in an 80% overall. On this test, it results in a 92, 93, 94, and 95% in terms of national percentile ranking. So again, what I want you to understand about the scoring is that you can miss more questions than you think on this test than you could in school. It's not like a school test and understanding that and understanding the scoring of a multiple choice test, specifically one like the SAT or the ACT, you have to make sure that you understand that you can miss more questions than you would be able to in school. If you have mastered everything from step one through four, and you're consistently scoring somewhere between 29 and 31 on the ACT math section, again, you've done that two or three or four times in a row, then you need to move on to step five. And what step five focuses on is what we call math odds and ends. And these are the very, very minute, very detailed concepts that you'll find on the ACT math section. For example, we mentioned earlier, matrices, vectors, permutations, combinations, symbol problems. These are all questions and concepts that will show up one time at most. Sometimes they don't even show up a full, for a full question on any given test, but you need to master these because they do come up. And if you don't master them, then, then it's very difficult to increase your score after 31. These are the types of questions that really make the difference between getting 51, 52, 53 questions correct and getting 58, 59, and 60 questions correct. So again, if you're scoring consistently in the 29 to 31 range on the math section, and you've, you've really mastered the first four steps that I've already mentioned, I want you to focus on math odds and ends. We cover them entirely in our book, vectors, matrices, permutations, combinations, all that stuff, probability. Okay, we cover it exclusively in our book, but again, you can find any of these concepts. It's just very rare that you'd study them in school. So math odds and ends are very important for increasing your score from the 31 to the 36 range. Okay, so guys, that's five easy steps. If you focus on those five rules, you shouldn't have too much trouble increasing your score very quickly, and again, hopefully getting to a 36. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel. We have videos on the English section, videos on the reading section, science section. We also have videos on the SAT, as well as academic subjects, and we'll continue to bring you a full array of tutorial videos on, on all test prep and all academic subjects. So again, guys, have a great day, and we hope to see you soon.